or welcome back everyone to today's latest Destiny 2 video. Today's showcase will be covering another 5 new light builds, but this time for the Warlocks. Like last time, we covered your Hunters and showed you all the viable but simple builds you can create without the use of mods or perks or etc. And this time around, we shall be doing the same thing again by showing you some fun and very powerful loadouts that you can put together and go to town on. So as a heads up, I won't be using any mods that are unattainable to the masses such as Charge with Light, Warmind Cells or Elemental Well mods. That will be at a later date. I will be covering Titan builds as well, but that will be at a later date as well. I will also cover different types of builds to consider over time, including Endgame, PvP, Off Meta and more. Depending on what one is done, I may also do an in-depth version of them at a later date as well. And lastly, I would like to add in that the way I'm going to present this will be in a very basic format compared to my other videos, considering how long it would take to go in depth for each and every build available. Hopefully, this doesn't take too much away in terms of information you need. Any questions, please do message me, or any comments, do leave it in the comment section. Before we head in, if you enjoyed the video, then I would really appreciate it if you leave a like and a sub, as it really does help me out. So the first build we'll be looking into is called On the Edge of Death, and the build involves the use of Attunement of Elements, the Stag Exotic Helm, and Tommy's Matchbook. The idea of the build is to play risky to get the large benefits from near-death experiences, and this is something I don't recommend you bring with you if you plan to play anything that requires you to survive for long periods. This build's synergy comes from the Stag Helm and Tommy's Matchbook, where both sides allow you to activate each other's parts quickly, but for the sacrifice of health of course. The stack allows users to gain rift energy when critical and upon deaths, you will drop a healing well for you and your team. Tommy's now will allow you to burn your health off to the point of being critical, but will give you an increased damage boost when it's overheated. Now with the two in hand, we can use Tommy's effect to get us down to critical health and then get an enemy to damage us while on critical to activate the stack's perk and for us to get a 50% rift energy back. Now combine this with Bottom Tree Arc for the Arc Souls and you can be a constant source of rifts on the Arc Buddies for your teammates in both PvE or PvP. Like I said, very fun build to play and mess around with that can expand over time and add in mods that can help make you survive for longer once you do hit critical health. Please do be aware though, that when you do use the Stag and Tommy's combo to activate the Stag's perk, you must have an enemy damage you when you reach critical health as the game won't recognize the damage you inflict on yourself to activate the stag's perk. Our second build now is called Mini Fire Team, and as the name states, you're going to be gaining a lot of support from unlikely places. The whole point of the build focuses on the use of Arc Souls to provide constant damage against whoever or whatever you face, and it is very powerful for something so simple and small. Using a getaway artist and no time to explain, we can have two souls available on the screen as long as we activate them through their required methods, and both methods simply require you to A. Have energy available, aka the getaway artist, and B. Get kills, plus precision damage, to produce a mini soul, aka no time to explain. Once you get either one ready, you should then be able to get the other half ready in no time, and have fun from there. Now where the bottom tree subclass comes into this is just an extra add-on if you don't want to use your getaway artist just yet, as using the exotic will take your grenades away. The pro to this is that doing so will last longer and is much stronger compared to the rift version, but at the same time you lose ability for a short while, which could have been used better elsewhere. We can fix this though by having a secondary or heavy with the demonicious perk, so we can have a quick and easy way of getting our grenades back. Simply even having the bomber mod and distribution mod which are both accessible to all can easily help fix this area as well. And next we have another popular community build that everyone uses when using Warmind Cell based mods, and this once again is a fast, simple and incredibly powerful in the right environment. Using some braces, Monte Carlo and Attunement of the Sky, we can create a near unlimited amount of solo grenades at our disposal and control a whole field of them with little effort involved. To activate the sun braces, you will need to get a charged solar mini kill, and from there, for roughly 5 seconds, you will get an unlimited grenade to throw. Now, to extend it so that this can happen more often, we will be using the Monte Carlo and the Zotic perk that will allow you to build up our melee ability per damage done with the weapon, while also giving us a chance to get a full refund. This, combined with the sun braces, allows us to not only have unlimited melees but also unlimited grenades at the same time, and thus you can rain pure hell onto everyone. 
With the subclass of choice, the charge merely shoots out three powerful projectiles that can track for certain distances, but also hit quite hard, and usually ends in the death of a player or enemy. We then also have the ability to stay in the air for longer via the Winged Sun perk and the Heat Rises perk from the subtree, and both of these together can allow you to fully reenact yourself as an AC-130. This is overall a great setup to where you're playing against a large group of enemies that need to be cleared out ASAP before being overwhelmed, and this is one of the most effective ways of doing so without much investment needed. Next up we have another crowd controller build based around Ark, but this time you're going to be procking it a lot and anyone caught within it will be shocked to the core. With the power of the Crown of Tempest and Attunement of Conduction, we can create a very nifty build that will yield you the ability and energy that you can focus back into your Risk Runner to proc its ability and have a constant space of Arc Energy flowing in between you and your enemies. Now for all of this to work, 100% of the time, you will need to be utilising both your grenades and melee and for this you're going to need to make sure you use your mods that heavily focus on providing energy to these following areas. From the subtree, we have the arc web perk that will chain arc damage to others and also regen your grenades to those it affects. The smart way to make this work in a loop is to use your pulse grenade near a group of weak enemies and let the grenade take out or injure them to proc the perk and in the meanwhile will also proc our exotic helm. This will give a large chunk of grenade energy back while also charging our cells to go ahead and use the risk runner like a madman. The other way to do this is to have enemies that use arc weapons to proc the perk and build in general, but this is 50-50 and relies on you getting the correct enemies to do so. Doing the looping method where you self inflict it is the best and most effective way to always have this working, and it's great for content like Gambit as it never tends to slow down. Lastly, we have a build that can be designed and catered to however you like, and you'll still get the same effects even when you don't have the specific weapon you need to use to make the whole build work. Now, using a Tournament of Hunger for its Devour perk, Nezrak Sin for its Void Ability Regen Boost, and the Graviton Lance Pulse Rifle for its Void Effects, we can have a constant ability and health regen build outgoing for wherever you go and these simple effects can make this build very endgame worthy as the rate to energy you get will keep you afloat for every section you dive into. Devour has always been a top tier perk to use because of its ability to sustain the user's life for longer while Nezrax allows users to have a constant feed of energy going their way as long as they use a void weapon. With the two combined you can still get damage and still come out on top with the highest amount of damage done to all enemies. With Graviton attached the weapon fits perfectly not only for its void effects but also its special effects after getting a kill to where its seekers that spawn can also net and kill those around it if they manage to catch up to them. This for us pretty much boosts our usage rates quite a bit as we allow the seekers to damage or kill those around us while we can stay at a relatively safe distance and still reap the benefits. The great thing about this build though is that you can use any void weapon of your choosing and the effects will still be the same and just as strong. This means you are not locked into using just one specific weapon for its benefits and can freely pick and choose to your liking. Something like this will be great for those that want to quickly rush their way to end game with a build that won't change at all and still be as strong as it was from ever before. These are a few of the many great builds you as a new player can put together and use if you want to test out some strong and fun builds. Some of these can be expanded on further with mods once you collect them and some of them don't even need anything more than a right weapon to pair with. Whatever you choose, let this be a helpful example as to what you should aim for and see what you should do on your end. So if you enjoyed the video, then please do leave a like on the sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny and Titanfall 2 lore content if you dig that type of stuff, the link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, I'll see you on the next one.